seven game road trip begins tonight for the Cardinals at Turner Field in Atlanta the first of three against the Braves the Cardinals off to a fine start they're 13 and six Bobby Cox and the Braves at 500 at nine and nine. That's Albert Bosky. I'm Dan McLaughlin. Welcome to the broadcast booth. Certainly they're considered two of the best players of their generation and undoubtedly two of the best hitters. It's Chipper Jones and Albert Pujols. Those two will be on display tonight, Al. Let's start with the switch hitting Jones. What is it about him that makes him so special? Well, when he's been healthy and he's had numerous injuries in his career, he's been very, very consistent. Last year, he was a National League batting champion and isn't it amazing that who was number two was Albert Pujols. But Chipper Jones is a real threat. Doesn't have the extra base power that he once had. Albert Pujols is fresh off the player of the week in the National League. And what a great start for Albert. He leads the National League in home runs and RBIs. And as we said, he was second in batting average last year to Chipper. Two great hitters, the faces of these two good franchises. And let's hope that the luck from the homestand and the winning ways continues on the road for the Cardinals. When we come back, we'll take a look at some of those highlights from the recent homestand, a 5-1 and one stand for the Birds. We're back with more on Fox Sports Midwest in just a moment. Glad you're with us here in Atlanta. It's the Braves and the St. Louis Cardinals game one of their three game series in the first of this seven game road trip. But the homestand is what we just saw at Bush Stadium in St. Louis as Jerry Manuel brought the Mets to town. Fly ball out to shallow left. Duncan over. Sliding catch. Nicely done. Well, defense would really be the story of this series. In particular, this play set the tone. And the throw may get away. It will. Thurston tried to apply the tag to the plate. And oh, they got him. He didn't slide. The slider. Pitch is improved on. And he got him. Cardinals sweep the Mets. Final 12 to 8 here at Bush. Some big plays along the way in the first three games. And then we said hello to Carlos Zambrano and the Chicago Cubs. A big series for Albert Pujols at Bush Stadium as he would pick up his 1,000th RBI. Yesterday, though, it was a struggle for Cardinal starter Todd Wellemeyer, the only loss during the homestand for St. Louis. But the big blow late Saturday afternoon, one of the longest home runs at the new Bush Stadium, a grand slam by Albert Pujols that sealed the game two win. Game one on Friday night was the pitcher's duel, and that was won by St. Louis. So we turn the page on the homestand and say hello to the road. The pitching matchup, the Braves and Cardinals next. The Braves and Cardinals, first of three here in Dixie at Turner Field in Atlanta. Let's take a look at the pitching matchup. A pair of right-handers will start with the Cardinals, Joel Pinheiro. Alley's looking to go to 4-0. What a difference a year makes. Now he's getting the ball down on a consistent basis, a lot of ground balls, and he's become a winner. So Pinheiro looks for win number four on the other side. Jair Jurgens, who is 2-1, but an ERA, look at that, under 2 at 1.42. Third best ERA in the National League. And his last two starts, his teammates have failed to score while he's been on the mound. Always fun when these two get together, the Braves and the Cardinals. Our first pitch in starting lineups coming up next. Cardinals baseball is brought to you by Bud Light with just the right taste. It never fills you up. The difference is drinkability. By Steak and Shake, famous for steak burgers. By Auto Tire. For the lowest prices in town, choose Auto Tire. We shop the competitors so you don't have to. And by Chevy. See your Mid America Chevy dealers or shop and compare at STLChevy.com. Turner Field in Atlanta, and he's been a fixture here for years, and that's Bobby Cox, one of the great managers ever in the major leagues. And on the other side, Tony La Russa. And here's Skip Schumacher to lead it off for the Cardinals, playing second base, and the first pitch is popped foul and out of play. Skip is batting 298. No home runs and eight RBIs. And now one of the things you always look at with a leadoff man is on base percentage, and Skip at 369. Yeah, you'd like to see that improve a little bit more, but you know it's uh, it's something that I've been impressed with keeping the high batting average while he's learning to play a new position. 
Jer Jurgens is the pitcher for the Atlanta Braves. They really like this guy. He has an ERA, as we mentioned just moments ago, that's under two, and his record stands at two and one so far. Very good young pitcher. A few years ago, he needed improvement on that breaking ball, but he's got the package. That time, the changeup in the bottom fell out of that yeah, pitch. The changeup, he got away with it up in the zone, but that has been a very effective pitch since he got to the major league level. It's his third year in the big leagues. He led the staff and you know innings pitch last year. That's been a problem for them getting innings. Here's a 2 2 pitch. Taken high and outside and it's three and two Schumacher here Ricky and Keel on deck and then we'll see the great Albert Pools. Jurgens only 23 years of age. And that's past the shortstop Escobar. May have gotten a glove on it, but it's a leadoff base hit for Skip Schumacher. And let's take a look at this Cardinals lineup. Off to a great start here in 09. Schumacher and Keel and Pujols just named the player of the week. Nine for 23 homers and seven runs scored to go along with those 11 RBIs. Ludwig, Duncan, Molina, Thurston, Ryan gets the start at shortstop, and then Joel Pinheiro, the pitcher for the Cardinals, batting ninth. Cardinals are first in average home runs and RBIs as a team as Ricky and Keel takes a ball outside and Keel with a home run yesterday against Chicago. Tough series against Chicago for Rick but he did his second home run yesterday. And Tony La Russa was asked if and Keel was starting to come out of it at the beginning of this uh, Chicago series over the weekend and he said well let's see him do it let's see him repeat what he did against the Mets and if he does that then yeah then you're probably looking at a guy that's starting to come out of a little bit of a slump to start this year. That's the change up that time and he saw a lot of change ups during the homestand. The numbers for Jurgens brought to you by Marshall Wireless. He won his first two starts actually pitched better in his last two starts but had no run support while he's on the mound. And he got him with the change up again. That's a pitch that you're going to that you can exploit Rick and some of the young left handed hitters. And it brings in pool holes. Here's a look at the auto tire defense for the Braves. Jones, Schaefer, Frank in the outfield. Jones, Escobar, Kelly Johnson, Casey Kotchman along the infield. Jurgens and David Ross, the former Red, is behind the plate. Around the horn brought to you by Auto Tire. So here is Albert Pools. I think it'll be interesting to see how Bobby Cox wants to approach pitching, if at all, to Pools in this series. He and, is on a tear. And how about Albert has 23 hits to start the season. And very little production, only 25 RBIs. Yeah, 25 RBIs. Seven home runs, the 25 RBIs lead the National League. He leads in runs scored. The 25 RBIs, five better than Andre Ethier. Of the Dodgers, he's got 20. 16 walks already. He's only struck out four times. And out of the 16 walks, five of those have been intentional. The 29 year old Albert Pujols. It's a little bit low. Against right handed pitching a year ago, he was fourth best in the major leagues. He hit 333. Against lefties, he hit 411. And struck out only 54 times. That was the total a year ago. And that's the one thing that he has gotten better and better with. And it really even wasn't that bad. Uh, when he began his career the strikeouts and hitting for average and power No, that's even from day one of the major leagues he made great contact maintained the high average with very few strikeouts his rookie season he struck out ninety three times and again fifty four that's it from a year ago those are old time numbers old time uh, they used to be guys would would Stay in the minor leagues forever because they'd strike out 100 times. You know, they could hit 50 home runs in the minor leagues and they'd stay in the minor leagues because they said, hey, strikes out too much. Not pools. He is old school. Home runs, average, RBIs, walks, lacks a, a, the strikeout totals that you see from a lot of the power hitters. The 2 2 pitch he strikes out here. So two strikeouts for Jurgens. Uh, Jurgens got good movement on his fastball. 
94, painting it in the outside part of the plate. Look where he's set up. Ross is out there, actually gets him to expand the zone and swing the ball off the plate. That's not often that Albert will do that. Brings in Ludwig. Batting in the cleanup spot. Get the feeling that this is probably the right position for Ludwig in this lineup. I do. I really do because, I mean, you still got to think of Duncan and Ann Keel. Some of these guys are, you know, they'll match up well with certain pitchers. But I think consistently you're going to get the production from Ludwig. Also seems, too, that if you get one of those younger players in a rut, you put them in front of pool holes, they're going to see pitches to hit as opposed to being behind him. And more pressure maybe in that cleanup right. spot. And Ludwig smokes one out to left. That's a base hit. A lot of top spin on that line drive. And it's first and second now with two outs. And it brings in Duncan, who's been very good on the road. Chris Duncan hitting 455 away from Bush Stadium so far this year. Let's go back to Ludwig as he crushes this ball. And as you said, the top spin, where you hit it so hard that the ball just starts sinking. Sometimes you'll hit a ball with top spin better than you hit a home run pitch. Cardinals coming off a home stand in which they scored 38 runs. The sweep of the Mets winning two of three against Chicago. They had six home runs and as a team hit 323. Uh, career high 13 game hitting streak was stopped last Wednesday and since that time Duncan has really struggled trying to make contact. Here's a 1 0 pitch. Two balls, no strikes, and Molina is on deck. How about now as you look towards the tail end of this lineup, a guy like Molina and what he brings to the table now as opposed to a couple of years ago? Wow, much better hitter. You know, he's hit 300 last year. He's got that average up there this year and just becoming a more productive, you know, his production is moving up as he's starting to become a little bit of a threat. Joe Thurston is at third base tonight. And he's off to a fine start above 300. Yadier hitting in the sixth spot. And Frank Corr was saying that their six, seven, and eight are very dangerous. He said they're not going to hit for a ton of power up and down this lineup. Frank Corr was saying that. But uh, if you look at consistency and for guys that hit for average, he said we'll be one of the better teams that, uh, that has that element to their lineup this year. The 3 1 pitch. Duncan a line drive out to left that's a base hit Schumacher being waved in throw from Jones offline and it's one to nothing Cardinals Duncan on his way to second base boy how is that aggressive base running the balloon throw home allows both runners to get into scoring position Ludwig goes first to third and Duncan running extremely hard on his RBI base hit ends up in scoring position out at second. And it's three base hits for the Cardinals here in this first inning. Here's the weak throw by Brandon Jones. Misses the cutoff man. So that allows Ludwig to go to, to third base. And Duncan running hard right out of the gate. He gets into sliding into second. And the Braves are missing two key guys in their lineup. And also defensively, Garrett Anderson, the former Angel, would be in left. As Molina is late on that swing and now a lead for Pinheiro and also missing time will be Brian McCann because of a, a blurred vision situation for him. Yeah we'll talk a little more about uh, McCann but the one thing that's been true now Pinheiro's pitched very well but he's been given a lot of run support and that always helps. 0 1 pitch. A little check swing 0 and 2. Yadier and Molina is hitting 344 and Pinheiro is looking for his fourth win already this season tonight. And just Everything paying off. He's healthy. He came in spring training, good shape. The ability to keep the ball down and get ground balls has been his success. The sinker, his last time out was his best pitch. Well, Dave told him in spring training that is a pitch you're going to use a lot. This is fought off, but popped up on the infield. Escobar on the grass and makes the catch. A two out base hit by Duncan. One nothing Cardinals after a half inning. Well, you see a lot of Cardinal fans when you come down here to Atlanta, Georgia. That's what we've got here tonight. 
as we welcome you back inside to Turner Field and a look at the Braves lineup. Kelly Johnson will lead it off and then Escobar and then Chipper Jones the batting champion from a year ago. He's hit 291 against the Cardinals in his career. Kochman, Francoeur, Jones, Ross, Schaefer, and the pitcher, Jurgens. Bobby Cox, of course, you had a chance to play a couple of seasons for Bobby Cox here in Atlanta. I sure did, and was let go, went to Toronto, came a success there, and back to Atlanta, first as a general manager, and then back down on the field. Joel Pinheiro. Lefties have hit him quite well at 325 this year, 13 for 40. And a long way to go for the shortstop, Brendan Ryan, tonight. He won't get there, and that's a strike. One ball, one strike. And a look at the numbers for Pinheiro. He's 3 and 0. And these are brought to you by Marsha Wireless. As Al told you, Cardinals have had great run support for him as you see opponents hitting 307. But his last start, arguably his best in which he was really basically exclusively throwing that sinker. Two is right a couple of steps. Schumacher gets Johnson by a step. Well, you know, sometimes you get a little older, you get a little smarter, you listen a little more to Dave Duncan, and, you know, ground balls don't go out of the ballpark. Remember how many home runs he allowed a year ago? He actually has six walks and five strikeouts, but strikeouts are overrated. As he went eight innings last time out, did not record a strikeout, but had 16 ground ball outs, and that's the key in the formula to success. From Havana, Cuba, this is Yanel Escobar, the shortstop. They really like this guy, young player, hitting 295. He's the 75th overall pick back in 2005. With the emergence of Escobar, they were able to trade away Renteria. And that's when they picked up Jurgens. Joe Thurston playing in, and he makes the play. Raboski jerseys, both Atlanta Braves and Cardinal Raboski jerseys when you come here. Didn't you see the uh, notice of the escaped mental patient? <laughs> the Raboski jersey. Wow. Here's Chipper Jones, the fine switch hitter of the Atlanta Braves. Played 128 games last year. Always a concern with Chipper Jones. Can he play a full year? And he's dealing with a sore thumb. Kind of jammed the thumb a little bit on his left hand. Been in and out of the lineup, but 333 left handed, 333 right handed currently. Last year he had 364, 22 homers. He driv uh, drove in 75. So two outs, nobody on for Chipper Jones. And a 2-0 pitch. Good seeking action there. Schumacher up with it. Over to Albert. And a good start for Pinheiro. Braves go 1-2-3 after an inning of play at Turner Field. Cardinals on top. Al has a look at our Toyota keys to the game. Well, the two managers are number one and number two in winning as active managers. They're also third and fourth all time. The number three hitters, Albert Pujols, Chipper Jones, the two guys you've got to keep from beating you, the two best hitters in the lineup. And then you look at the run supports for the two starters. Pinheiro has gotten over nine runs per start, and Jurgens, his last two starts, his teammates had not allowed, uh, given him any run support while he's been on the mound. Seven, eight, nine for the Cardinals as we start play here in the second. This is Joe Thurston, the starter at third base. What a job defensively this guy has done at third base, and he's really hit, obviously, at 326 with all the Devils, but how many times has he been playing in on the grass and made a real nice play to his right or his left? Well, I just think the platoon, if we can say that, between Thurston and Barton has just been a plus. I mean, outstanding the way they've been offensively, defensively, and just look like they, you know, mesh together with this ball club, that they understand their roles, always ready to perform, and they have to perform. RBI leaders, the Firestone RBI leaders among the uh, rookies, and Joe Thurston at the top of that list. Ryan 11. Barton also in there. Yeah, 11 RBIs. And these guys, with whoever's been picking, Doing the job defensively and really contributing offensively. Good to see. 
And Barden and Thurston are one and two in on base percentage among rookies in the National League as well. <laughs> How about that? Three and two. Leadoff man Joe Thurston at third base again tonight. Brendan Ryan on deck and then Joel Pinheiro. Gap out there in right center and Frank Gore is playing pretty shallow in right too. And we've seen the extra base power. The doubles that Thurston's hit that could be uh, something he might exploit this defensive alignment. Here's a three two. And a leadoff walk for Thurston. Well good to see that Chris Carpenter is on the trip with the Cardinals and slowly but surely making progress. Happy birthday to Chris by the way he's 34 today. Yeah I left a little note for him. It's that is uh, something that usually if a guy's on the disabled list and can't play they do not take him on the road. I believe Carpenter should always be the exception. I'm sure his family would love to have him home but I think he is such a team leader that just what he can do travel on the road with the young players particularly the pitching staff. I think he's invaluable in that department. But he also is here because things are progressing and they can continue his arm exercises. Pitch out and undoing. He's also uh, surprised and pleasantly surprised to read that he's trying to kick his yes. uh, his chewing at it. Yeah, I, I, Tobacco at a habit. little I guess the acupuncture to try to right. get, get through that. I'm sure you have talked to numerous players Al and guys that you played with that you know even once the game was over for them it, it is a very very difficult habit to break. Well it's one that just from a health issue we hope they all break it. And you know the Cardinals have a few that like Carpenter that need to kind of uh, break the habit but you know extremely addicted that nicotine. So Carpenter put himself through acupuncture yesterday in trying to kick the habit. Threw away all the tins and didn't pack any on the road. And that's great. Here's a 2 0 pitch and a strike on the outside corner. Jurgens is from Curacao. Same island that produced Andrew Jones. He was pretty good here in Atlanta. Absolutely. And like Andrew Jones, he speaks numerous languages. The 2 1 is drilled out to center field. Schaefer backing up to make the catch. Back to first, Thurston. You can visit the official online shop of the Cardinals at STOCardinals.com and browse the largest selection of authentic gear, including caps, t shirts, jerseys, and more. That's STOCardinals.com. So Brendan Ryan retired, and here is Pinheiro, who's one for seven so far this year, and he does have a sacrifice. And Pinheiro. Contribute a little bit offensively his last time out, getting his first base here of the year, but here you would think he'd be in a sacrifice situation. Jurgens was in the uh, Tigers organization. Then he said it was a dream come true for him. He said he grew up a Braves fan because his dad was. And his dad, his name is Carl, he became a Braves fan when the Braves were in Milwaukee. And he idolized Hank Aaron. So, yeah, he said his dad. Had a bat as a kid that one of the kids in the neighborhood wrote Hank Aaron on the bat. So he wanted to find out about Hank Aaron. Hank Aaron was playing in Milwaukee, and there you go. Well, he came over in the Renteria deal, but he kind of he was a non-drafted pitcher out of Curacao. And it kind of reminded you, I wonder if he could have the same success as a former Detroit player that came to Atlanta, pitcher. Smoltz. Smoltz. <laughs> yeah. And speaking of a brave new world, no John Smoltz this year. Jurgens, Vasquez, Lowe. They picked up the young man there from Japan who was the equivalent to winner of their Cy Young Award a year ago. And then they also have JoJo Reyes. And Tom Glavin trying to decide whether he's going to try to continue as they signed him, but they shut him down. And apparently he talked to Dr. Andrews, going to give it a couple weeks. And if it's going to be a long rehab process. He'll call it quits. A lot of fans upset with the Braves that they did not bring back John Smoltz, and he signed with Boston. Yeah, miscommunication there. You know, story I got that Frank Wren, the general manager, said he called, and you see Smoltz in the end called him four times with no return call, and 
Schmoltz will say, well, I never got a call. But you, know, you almost think, too, that John Schmoltz might have said, I want to go to a, you know, a location where I can be on a winner again and chose Boston. Here's a 2-1. They allowed him all the time to get uh, fully healthy and be ready by the middle of the season and make the stretch run for the Red Sox. Well, the one thing, too, is I think la early last fall, you know, he was talking about I'll be ready by opening day as the offseason progressed is I'll be ready by June 1st. And it's a ball by uh, taken by Schumacher. Yeah, and so I, I guess the, the five million dollar price tag was a little steep for the Atlanta for just half a season. But there's a you know what he has done for this franchise. It's hard to believe that they didn't try to at least make accommodate something. Three two pitch missed on the inside corner. And it brings in Ricky and Keel. Their 2008 rotation for Bobby Cox, they really had high hopes. They had Hudson, Smoltz, Glavin, and Mike Hampton, who hadn't thrown a regular season pitch since 05. And you have high hopes because Smoltz is 41, and Glavin at that time was 42. Well, and last year, Jurgens, Bobby's starter this year, was the only one that threw over 180 innings. There's a base hit up the middle. Thurston being waved in and he'll score and it's another two out RBI for the Cardinals and it's two nothing St. Louis. These two teams are one and two with runners in scoring position so far this year and the Cardinals are hitting close to 330 in that spot. Well Dan on the most recent road trip for the Braves they won four of nine games. They scored 33 runs and 27 of the Braves runs all came with two outs but two out base hits are so key. As Ankiel picks up his seventh RBI, scoring Thurston. And the Cardinals have the 2 0 lead. And guess who's up? He extended now to Pujols with first and third. Pujols struck out his first time up. But this is what we talk about with Albert and the fact, Al, that from at bat to at bat, he makes the adjustment. Right. I mean, it was. You may get him one time or something like this, but you know this time he is so much better prepared. He went up and studied. He saw where he expanded his zone, got a, got him to swing in a pitch off the plate, and that's not going to happen again. Closing in on his 2006 numbers. He had 28 RBIs in the month of April in 06. Without that month, the Cardinals probably don't make it to postseason play. Right, and, and remember, he I believe he set a franchise record with 14 home runs that month. 3 and 0 oh. and pool holes <laughs> hits it a mile high. They were turning him loose. Who wants it? The center fielder calls off Escobar that Schaefer and he puts it away. The Cardinals have stranded four so far but they have a 2 nothing lead against the Braves. Four hits for the Cardinals and they have a 2 nothing lead as the bottom of the second rolls in. At Turner Field in Atlanta. And a look at the Cardinals defense presented by Auto Tire. Duncan and Keel Ludwig in the outfield. Thurston, Ryan, Schumacher, and Pujols on the infield. And the battery tonight, Pinheiro and Molina. Auto Tire defense for the Cardinals. Here's Casey Kochman hitting 281. If I remember, he was part of the uh, Mark Teixeira deal at the trade deadline last year as he came over from Anaheim. And Season high seven game hitting streak snapped yesterday. And that's a fair ball over the bat. And it hits the ball boy down there. So that'll be a ground rule double. And I wonder if Tony La Russa may come out and argue this. From where we're at, it certainly didn't seem to be a fair ball. Well, our first base umpire, Chris Guccione, is trying to explain it to Albert. And now he'll have to explain it to the skipper as to whether that ball was fair or foul. Of course it's where it goes over the bag. Right. He has a much better look at he's closer but that is borderline and is called the strike goes off the wall here gets tangled up with the ball boy. I'm sure the ball boy's thinking that's a foul ball. Then he realized it's not can't get out of the way. So it's a leadoff double and Tony La Russa is through with that explanation. And here's Jeff Francoeur. Now they say that Francoeur has really changed what he was doing from a year ago. He has opened up his stance. And you might remember when Don Baylor did this not as uh, 
pronounced as Francoeur as Andres Galarraga. But they opened up his stance so that he would have both eyes towards the pitcher. Well, they, Terry Pendleton has worked on opening up his mind. And he would say that he was always in a panic mode. He would always swing at everything, and particularly the first pitch, and then panic when he had two strikes. And he's being a little more patient. But I've noticed the numbers. He's, he's, you know, against left handed pitching, he's batting 379. Even then, he's much better this year. He's only 233 against right handers, but both his home runs. He is three for eight with a double against Pinheiro in his career. Runner at second. Here comes a 1 1 pitch to Jeff Francoeur. Drives it into right center. Rick Ankeel is over, and he'll make the catch. You don't find many teams ready to run on Ricky and Keel this week on Fox Saturday Baseball. It's David Wright and the Mets. They'll head to Philly to take on Ryan Howard and the Phillies a showdown between two bitter division rivals Fox Saturday Baseball two o'clock only on Fox in high definition. And here's a left fielder Brandon Jones. Jones was just recalled over the weekend when Garrett Anderson was placed on the disabled list. Started yesterday and went two for three with a walk and an RBI. I don't know about you, but Garrett Anderson is one of those guys that, even with all these players changing scenery and changing teams, he's the one guy that just seems out of place. You know, he, he should be playing for the Angels. Angels. Been there a long time. Good friend of Jim Edmonds. Spoke very highly of how much he enjoys Garrett Anderson and close friends on and off the field. Little chopper hit to the right side. Schumacher, his third opportunity to make a play. Two outs, and it brings in David Ross. The Atlanta Braves last year were 72 and 90. They finished in fourth place in the National League East. And a big difference for Bobby Cox. They were 11 and 30 in one run games. 11 and 30. So if they just play 500 in those games, they finish at the 500 mark. And as you touched upon earlier, Al Bobby Cox went to his bullpen a ton last year and maybe too much. Yeah. A little better now that Mike Gonzalez is healthy and anchoring the closing when they got a bunch of left hand hitters coming up. Well, that's one of the reasons that they went out and traded for Javier Vasquez. He's averaged 216 innings a season for nine years. Derek Lowe has been a workhorse. You know, he gives you a chance to go deeper in the game. So those are two starters that will give you some innings. You know, we, we talk about it all the time that, you know, if you're going to win and be a consistent contender, you have to have a pitching staff that'll take you deep into the second half of the game. And, you, you know, five innings just doesn't cut it. You've got to get deep into a game, and then everything will fall into place for your bullpen. One ball, one strike. With two outs and a runner at third. That's pulled foul. You just see the command that Pinheiro has. Much better working on both sides of the plate, getting the ball down, changing speeds. You know, he's just really grasped. And, and one, he's healthy. Came in in good shape into spring training, had good results down there, and he's carried it into the beginning of the season. Two strikes on David Ross. Ross has power. You got to respect that. Back away. Good block by Molina. We talk about this all the time, too. The fact is that you have confidence in bouncing that to the plate with even a runner at third. And you can't emphasize that. You know, you, as a pitcher, you look over there, you got a runner at third, and then all of a sudden you go, well, can I throw this pitch or that pitch? You can throw them all with Molina back there because he will even tell you to bounce balls in the dirt when you're heading the count. He said, it's my responsibility. I'll block it. We're going to get this hitter out with that pitch. Here's a 2 2 to David Ross. On deck, Jordan Schaefer. Center fielder in the eighth spot in the lineup for Bobby Cox. Their excellent catcher, Brian McCann, is out. You know, he had the laser surgery a year ago, but this past week he's developed an eye infection to where he has the blurred vision, and they finally had to put him on the disabled list. Had nothing to do with the the procedure. It's just an infection he developed this week. 
Out to right center field, and Kiel won't get there. So two out base hits have been the story so far in RBIs. David Ross with his sixth RBI, and it's now a 2-1 St. Louis lead. You can see he's he's got that you know, raw power, and he, he showed that against the Cardinals a couple oh, yeah. of times well, in Cincinnati. Was, he did that, and there he got a pitch up, breaking ball, but it stayed up out over the plate, and he's got that raw power, you said, plugs the gap out there. And here's the Braves when they have two outs. They've been scoring. They've been a much better scoring team when they have two outs. This is one of those young prospects that the Braves are very, very high on. He's the 99th player in Major League history to homer in his first at bat. That was on opening night. It's a Sunday night, the only game going against the Phillies. He did that. Came the first. Braves rookie to make his major league debut in opening day starting lineup since one of Tom Mee's former teammates Rafino Linares did it 91 versus Cincinnati. Rafino Linares looked like he was about 40. He probably was then. And he might have been playing with Tom Mee. <laughs> I think they listed him at about 25 or 6 but he was a fun guy. He spoke his own language. Ryan Snicker, the third base coach, teammate of Tom Mee, he played in the at, with Rafino and also with uh, Tom Mee in the Meyer Leagues. Tom was part of the Braves Meyer League system. Our fine director. 0 oh, 2 popped up. Shallow center. Who wants it? Ryan is there and it'll be Ann Keel. He calls everybody off and he makes the play. Two out double by Ross, and it's 2 1 as we head to the third. Cardinals baseball on Fox Sports Midwest is brought to you by Kia Motors. To learn more, visit Kia.com. By Affleck, we've got you under our wing. And by the Casino Queen, home of the loosest slots. Turner Field in Atlanta, and it's 2 1 St. Louis as we move to the top of the third. Now you think about John Smoltz Tom Glavin and Greg Maddox Smoltz was here 21 years Glavin 17 he had two different stints and then 11 years for Greg Maddox in 11 years he won 194 games. Just wow. So dominant. And I mean you came in here you never worried about uh, innings because those guys are just going to go deep into ball games. Great winning percentages. Here's a 1 0 pitch. Ludwig, a high fly ball into right. Jeff Francoeur under it and makes the catch. So if you had to take one guy in their prime, Smoltz, Glavin, Maddox, you can't go wrong. But you had to win one game. Who do you take? It's a great question. It's a very good question. I think, in many ways, I'm, I'm going to take Smoltz. I, uh, that's where I'm going, too. I agree with you. You know Maddox for everything that he did in the regular season and I'm not sure it's because the strike zone would shrink in postseason play but he just wasn't as good. Cardinals got to him a couple of times in postseason play. He would definitely be my second choice. Again you can't go wrong. No. <laughs> <laughs> I mean all those guys were just incredibly good for such a long period of time. And you think about Smoltz too. He did it in different ways. Yeah, I mean, I mean he, if, if I needed to, I put him in the bullpen if I had to. Exactly. <laughs> Close games out. Duncan got things going for the Cardinals. Back in the uh, first inning, you see the pitch count already for Jurgens at 53. Only 23 years old. A little bit low, but he's walked two. Cardinals had three base hits. In the first and another in the second. They lead it 2 1. Better add on because I think Jurgen's not real sharp the first couple innings, but he's going to get sharper. The pitch count will be a factor. Jurgen's in his career, a record of 18 and 12. And opponents this year only hitting 207 against him. That is smoked out to center field. Schaefer back and makes the catch. 
pretty boy, you can't casual, hit a, right? You can't hit a ball much harder than that. No, he hit that ball extremely well, and the young center fielder goes back on it, and at the last second reaches up as he should have to haul it in. But he was pretty casual and had a beat on that all the way and knew he'd catch up to it. You reach up too soon, it slows you down. So you kind of have to run back, kind of get to the point you are, and then at the last second, reach up and make the catch. Here's Molina popped out to short with two runners on back in the first inning. First two retired with a fly out by Ludwig, line out by Duncan, and here's Yadier Molina. One ball, one strike. Craig Maddox, of course, retired this offseason. As Al told you, that uh, Tom Glavin may retire here. We're just waiting to hear about his future plans. And Smoltz trying to squeeze out one more year with the Boston Red Sox. The 1 1 pitch. On the outside corner, 1 and 2. Just didn't seem right that John Smoltz wouldn't finish up here in Atlanta. No, and I, I don't think he publicly wanted to state that maybe the deciding factor was that he wanted to end up on a winner, not thinking his choice chance would be that good with the Braves. But there's two sides to every story, and you gotta number one, you gotta want to be here. Right. And they've got to want you to some extent to yeah, finish your career here. You know, a lot of people are saying, you know, okay. You, know, you have John Smoltz and everything he did for this organization, five million in today's market, even if it's for half a season. And they paid a million for Glavin, and you aren't sure whether whether he's going to play, be able to perform or not. One guy that will finish his career at Brave, it looks like, is Chipper, Chipper Jones. Jones. He signed an extension a couple of weeks ago. Yeah. I think to what 2012 with an option or an opportunity for the 2013 on top of it. Just talking with some scouts and they say that the Braves are reloading and by the time that Jones is either in the final year or retired and Schaefer won't get that one but the Braves will be in a position to dominate again with young talent. There's Molina going the opposite way and we've seen that before. Well we've always felt that was one of the strengths of the hitter is that he's not pull conscious that he will go to the opposite field. Matter of fact that's why I think he's one of the better hit and run men on our ball club his ability to take pitches to the opposite field. And here's Thurston who walked and scored on the RBI by Ann Keel in the top of the second. Holding the runner on. So a lot of hitting room on the right side. That's an 11 game hitting streak by the way for Yadier Molina. We haven't talked much about Troy Gloss with the way that Barden and Thurston have been playing. I'm sure Troy's trying to get healthy quicker. Yeah. <laughs> a little pressure put on him. <laughs> but you know I mean he's you know, can't defy mother nature can you. No. He's going to have to rest and rehabilitate it but it's going to be. Uh, Probably late May, or early June before they really do any uh, baseball related activities. Well, you have to give John Mosellock and his staff some credit for finding guys like Thurston and Barden. The next half price night coming up May 4th against the Phillies. Fans can purchase terrace and pavilion reserve seats for half price. That means tickets as low as $8 to see the Cardinals and the Phils. The world champions will make their way to town. You know, Ryan Ludwig was a guy that was spotted. By Mo. Yeah, Mo said, let's take a flyer on this guy. It's paid off. Molina running, and he is out. I'll let Al explain that when we come back. <laughs> well, don't miss Bud Light T-shirt night. Always a popular night on Friday, May 15th at 7.15. Milwaukee in town. The first 25,000 fans, ages 21 and over, receive a Bud Light Cardinals T-shirt. The tickets go to stlcardinals.com. Jurgens, the hitter, as we start playing here in the bottom of the third at Turner Field in Atlanta. And the first pitch is a strike at the knees. Jurgens, then Kelly Johnson, and you know Escobar, if anybody can reach, then Chipper Jones. 
Jurgens from Curacao. Tiny island north of Venezuela. About 140,000 people on that island. Lives. If you've ever been to a, on a cruise ship to Curacao, that port is where he lives. Little floater into shallow right and making the catch, Skip Schumacher. We saw him come up with a dandy play Friday night against the Cubs. Somewhat similar to that, but he had to dive in the game at Bush. Nice play here. Calls off Albert and makes the catch. You know, people ask us now, you know, what, what kind of second base we and we just right now we just say that's a mute point. Don't worry about a thing. He's the second baseman. It's not even an issue to me anymore. Here's Johnson. And the surprising thing about the game on Friday, of course, was the drop in left by Skip Schumacher. Right. That's the last thing you expect. Exactly. Are you one of those believers, though, that he will take some of that? And that is a fair ball off the bat of Johnson. That he's, you know, concentrating so much on second base that it would affect his defense a little bit in the outfield or what happens at the plate. I guess more so at the plate than it would in the outfield. Yeah, I would think so. But I mean, I think that that is just such a rarity that it's one of those things you just chalk up to circumstance and just put it aside. And you know, he will, at some point, you know, he's putting in so much time working at second base that they all take it for granted his ability to. Play the outfield, and that was just a, a simple deal. He kind of took his eye off it, trying to prepare which base to throw to. A couple men on, and just didn't look it into the glove, and and end up being a two-base error. You don't see him like like Pedro Guerrero. <laughs> That's glove by Thurston. We'll explain that later. Uh huh. It's now four straight set down by Pinheiro. Thurston leads it off when we come back. 2-1 in favor of the Cardinals top of the fourth and the Cardinals continue their three game series with the Braves tomorrow right here on Fox Sports Midwest coverage starts at 530 with Cardinals live it's the Cardinals and the Braves tomorrow on Fox Sports Midwest. Now let's go back to Pedro Guerrero. Well Pedro was a slugger and he was having to play third base out of necessity and not playing the position very well so Tommy Lasorda said Pete what are you thinking about when the before the ball's being hit. He goes well I don't want it to hit to me. He goes, well, you can't think that way. What else are you thinking? Well, I don't want to hit the sacks either. <laughs> <laughs> I, I remember with the Jack Clark home run. By the way, Jack will be the analyst tonight on the postgame show. The, the first thing that comes to mind is the significance of the home run and, and Jack Buck's call. But for those of us that also saw it on TV, as the ball is sailing over Pedro Guerrero, he takes his glove off and just slams it, it to the, just in total disgust. <laughs> <laughs> That's our Petey. Yep. <laughs> That's like on Saturday if you watch the game on uh, Fox Saturday Baseball. I think it was Soto behind the plate. It was. And with, <laughs> with Pujols grand slam it was just like total dejection. I can't believe he threw it in that spot. Right. He walks. He walked Rasmus on a breaking ball. And then the first pitch fastball right down the middle of the plate to Albert. What do you expect? And he launched it. And that was that was that was a no doubter, was it? No. Well, even Poole said afterwards it was one of the best <laughs> yeah. balls he's ever hit. Now, will you explain to me Yadier Molina getting thrown out at second? Was that a missed sign at the plate? As he was caught stealing. That would help. That would help if that was the case, but uh, we can't verify that. You know, hey, he's stole the base. And Thurston hits it out to right. Frank Hoare is there. Frank Hoare plays a really shallow right field. You know, before that attempted steal, Yachty was was one for one in stolen bases. Mentioned the great run that the Braves had for so many years. 14 playoff appearances in 15 years. The only time that they did not go to the playoffs in that stretch was because of the 94 work stoppage. And in that time, 14 out of 15 years, they were top three in ERA in all but two. I mean, think about that. That's how good their pitching staff was. Top three in ERA in all but two of those seasons. 
John Sherholz for so many years and Bobby Cox and you know the thing is too about that run many of the players moved on but they still had Glavin and Smoltz and Maddox but even when they moved on they were able to replace yeah. them but you always had those big three two and one on Brendan Ryan gets the started shortstop here this evening hits it to third Chipper Jones with it and he makes the play yeah, Dan. Cardinal fans Ice Mountain autograph nights are back for this season join us on select nights throughout the summer to meet your favorite Cardinals players alumni as well for more details visit stlcardinals.com for the Ice Mountain autograph nights Yeah, you, know, you have these two great managers and both of them gonna end up in the Hall of Fame but they have that core group of players that conveyed to newcomers that hey you know we have a good system here follow the rules don't try, uh, try and buck the trend and everything will be fine but Bobby Cox and Tony La Russa run that clubhouse. Here's a ground ball hit to short Escobar with time backhands and makes the play. Cardinals go in order in the middle of the lineup due up for the Braves and we come back. This state in baseball history brought to you by Schnooks. Long afternoon ended by Fernando Vina. Sunday in Florida. The Cardinals win a 20 inning game, 7 to 6 against the Marlins. And Vina was hitless until that at bat. He went 1 for 10. Save the best for last. Did he ever? 2 1 Cardinals here in Dixie. And Chipper Jones will be the hitter. The Cardinals blow a significant lead yes, they in did. regulation and took it to the 20th for winning. Oh we had no place to go that day. No we didn't. Good thing it was a Sunday day game. And night game. <laughs> it's a long day. Here's Chipper Jones who said at the age of 15 he knew he wanted to be an Atlanta Brave said he was hooked on the Braves. He went to a game at the old Atlanta Fulton County Stadium. One of his favorite players was Dale Murphy. Hit a home run. Said that was it. He was hooked. There's a chopper hit to second backing up Schumacher to make the play. Ground balls after ground balls. That's seven ground ball outs. Here's Casey Kochman. Had a questionable double his first time up. It went over the bag by first. Tony La Russa came out to get an explanation from the umpire, and eventually Kochman came around to score on a double by Ross with two outs. And that pitch catches the outside corner. Kochman hit around 240 in his time with Atlanta a year ago. Yeah, they think he's going to be a very good hitter, but many times he's so far out on his front foot that it takes all the balance out of his swing and particularly the power is he had, you know gives way and nothing on the backside and having said that then Al how would you want to pitch him you think a change up fastball in out what do you want to do well you, you know you got to move it around and like this but when he's going to be out in front so he's going to be vulnerable to the outside part of the plate for off speed Pass the diving Schumacher. There's the off speed pitch, but didn't get it down or far enough away. In steps Jeff Francoeur. Pinheiro so far very efficient. Only 38 pitches. It's 16 in the second, but third inning was seven, fourth, now is seven. And a ground ball double play from getting out of this. And that's how you, you've got to think, you know. You just. Base hits are going to happen when especially when you're pitching to contact you're not trying to strike anybody out. So they're going to put the ball in play a certain percentage are going to go through. Frank Cora already with 21 hits tops for the Braves and 11th best in the National League. Bobby Cox Tony La Russa. Cox will be 68 in May. He started the year 436 wins behind John McGraw and chasing Tony La Russa. 
Connie Mack, of course, number one. Ben McGraw, Tony La Russa, and Bobby Cox, also active managers in the top ten. Joe Torrey. Here's your ground ball. Tough play. Double play. That was not easy at all for Brendan Ryan. A little nifty hop there, and Ryan makes the play, and a nice lead to Schumacher as they turn the double play. 6-4-3 on the double play. Top of the lineup coming up for the Cardinals as we move to the fifth. Aflac. Take a look at the Aflac trivia question. Name the three players to drive in their 1,000th career RBI with a grand slam. Of course, we know one of those did that on Saturday. Aflac. Albert Pujols. The other two, Mike Piazza and Keith Hernandez, did it back in 1988. Here's Skip Schumacher. I was disappointed not to see uh, Keith come through with the Mets. Ron Darling, yeah. this uh, last homestand. Always fun to visit with Keith Hernandez. Oh, two trips to New York, we'll get a chance to see. Schumacher is one for one. Base in the first and a walk and slices this one to the opposite field. Brandon Jones is there. And there's one away. That brings in Ricky and Keel. He's one for two with an RBI single. And Keel started the season with a beard, went to the mustache, and now cleanly shaven. Asked to me a reason, said nope. One out of the first pitch to him. Fastball in there for a strike. Rick had a seven for 21 homestand, but just one for eight in the Cubs series. Out to right, Frank Core is there. And it brings in Albert Pujols. He is 0 for 2. And Jurgens is set down five straight. Pujols tonight is struck out and also popped out to shallow center. Well, you kind of got that feeling that Georgian wasn't real sharp. Gave up one run on three hits in the first inning. He walked a pair and, and a hit, giving up another run in the second. So he felt like he was going to settle in, and he has, but this is Albert. Pujols in all the categories that we talk about with Albert home runs, RBIs, but how about runs scored? And right now he leads the league in runs scored. That is something that he always he will think about that much more than anybody else. But takes tremendous pride driving in people, but also scoring for others. In his eight years, seven of the eight, a hundred or more runs scored, and the one time that he didn't, a couple of years ago, he was at 99. Right. Won his ninth player of the week award last week. That time is called. Ludwig is on deck. A count of two balls, one strike. With two outs, nobody on. We're in the fifth. Dan McLaughlin, Alberbowski with you and our Fox Sports Midwest crew. 86 pitches for Jurgen, so he would need an efficient inning here. Well, he did a couple starts ago have a career high 120 pitch game. As his teammates didn't give me run support and Bobby trying to keep him in there for a victory. The 2 1. 3 and 1. Hit five walks. That was April 12th in that start. And since then, his teammates say he's been on a mission. Next start against Pittsburgh, only one run as he pitched into the seventh. Pujols reaches for it and picks up a base hit past Chipper Jones. So two out hit extends the inning to Ludwig. Ludwig is one for two on the night with a single. He's also lined out to right. You can just tell Albert's legs are so much better this year as he is so aggressive the way he's running, coming out of the box. He's always been a monster on the bases and obsessed with scoring. But this year those legs are to the point where he, you know, there's no there's no governor on him to this year. The steals come to mind. Busted out of the box like Cal McCray used to. He's three for three in stolen bases this year. 
Well, you can't you can't hit doubles without coming out of the box thinking a double. You know when you're leaving the box and then let the defense stop you at first base. 1 0 to Ludwig off the end of the bat little swinging bunt Ross is on it makes the play Cardinal strand their fifth runner we're midway through five St. Louis on top in a 2 1 game. Cardinal fans here at Turner Field enjoying this one so far 2 1 Cardinals lead the Braves now entering the bottom of the fifth Dan Al you guys were talking about Albert Pujols winning the National League Player of the Week award it was announced today. Well that makes nine watches for Albert and I asked him before the game what do you do with nine watches and he said he has not worn a single one of them he puts them in a case they're on display and in fact his son is the one that looks at them all the time and tells him how great they look but he will not wear any of them they're just to be left in a case to be admired and here's a fly ball to left that'll test Duncan and he'll make the catch. And Pat I know you had a chance to uh, visit with Albert Pujols and uh, before the game. He obviously is in a good mood. The team is winning and, and he's playing great. Well and he always points out and that's that's Albert. He always points out that it's the team and the fact that he's hitting so well just allows the team to win ball games which they did that five and one homestand just completed yesterday. Uh, he'd trade in all the watches in the world for another World Series ring. You guys know that as well. And uh, he's in a very good mood these days, and for good reason. He's hitting the ball exceptionally well. How about Kyle Loesch? Is uh, we'll see him on this road trip. How's the knee? Well, I talked to him as well. Watched him uh, a couple hours before the game, running out uh, into the center field and back, testing the knee, doing some cutting on it. He came back and he told me everything went really well, better than he expected. He will make the start tomorrow. You'll hear. More of what he told me coming up on the post game show U.S. Cellular Cardinals live. But uh, all things uh, point to him making that start start and continuing with this great start to the season for him. All right. Thank you Pat. That's Pat Paris. And uh, there's a look at Loge. That's good news because there was a lot of concern that day game on Thursday against the Mets. It's his right knee. There's a ground ball. Nicely backhanded by Brendan Ryan. How about that play. That's two very nice plays by Brendan Ryan. First one he got a tough short hop coming in and turning into a double play. This one deep in the hole. Boy, this is and slick. how flashy is he the way he slides to stop his progress and then right over the top pure arm strength. You know I was asked before the game about his throwing arm and I said well you know he's he's fine but he didn't have you know. Dunstan type arm strength but that was an example that was a lot better than I thought. Well, that's a great play. It brings in the eighth place hitter Schaefer. When Brendan Ryan was drafted out of Los Angeles he was noted as a top notch defender and one of the better glove men on the West Coast. And he's showing us here. Getting a chance to play with Khalil Green on the bench tonight. That's saying a lot when he's in Michael Jackson country. Glove man. Top notch you. glove man, you know, just to help you out. He, he only wore one glove, too. That is awful. <laughs> You see the gloves in the difference. Schumacher's is slightly bigger than what you see most second basemen wear. And that infielder's glove, the typical type that uh, you see Brendan Ryan as at short, as Pinheiro may have been stepped on at the bag. He's all right, and we move to the sixth. 2 1 Cardinals. Third annual career fair at Bush Stadium is coming up on Tuesday, May 5th. Representatives from many of the area's top corporations will be on hand for a pregame career fair. One great price gets you admission to the fair and a ticket to the Cardinals Phillies game that night. For more information, call 345 9500. These two teams, since the start of 2000, have been one and two as far as wins in the National League Cardinals and the Braves. Bobby Cox and Tony La Russa. Cox has had the best of him in regular season play but Tony has had the best of him in the postseason. This has popped up foul territory Chipper Jones with a play. 
Good to see the two hands with the catch. Chris Duncan is one for three. And in steps Molina. How much longer can they go with Jurgens? He's approaching now 100 pitches. Let's see if Bobby Cox wants to get his bullpen going. Well, he has some activity in that bullpen, but hopeful that Jurgens will get him through this sixth inning. You can see why they're so high on this guy. Oh yeah, and and he's a little bit off to start this game, allowing the two runs and four hits and a couple walks in the first two innings. Here's a 1-0 pitch to Molina. 2-0. The, the trend that we talked about, very little run support, is holding true. And on the other side, the Cardinals have the 2-1 lead, but have not uh, taken advantage and scored as many runs as they normally do for Pinheiro. Dave Dombrowski, the GM of the Tigers, even admitted that it was a bad deal as they got rent to Rian, They gave up Jurgens. They also have an outfielder that they picked up in the deal that's at double A. They say he's very good defensively. Renteria only hit 270 in that year. There's a grounder hit to short. Scored only 69 runs and his on base percentage was barely over 300. And the Braves have Jurgens for quite a while. Celebrate the 30th anniversary of Lou Brock's 3,000th career hit Sunday, May 17th at Bush Stadium. 25,000 fans, ages 16 and older, receive a Lou Brock replica statue. Get your tickets today by calling 345-9000 or visit stlcardinals.com. And you look at Dombrowski with the acquiring Cabrera and Dontrell Willis. Cabrera having a solid year. And Great year, but Willis still trying to find. It. I think everybody and, and in baseball. Gave him, what, a three year contract for, you know, over 30 million. 30 million before he threw a pitch for him. I think everybody, though, is pulling for him to come back. Sure. Good guy, and he's lost it. They say, though, his last few starts in the minor leagues have been much better. One ball, one strike, and Dave Dombrowski doesn't make many bad moves. No. Boy, he was good when they had to retool with Florida and unload all that salary. And he picked up great players. Thurston trying to bunt his way on. Jurgens will underhand to first, and the Cardinals go in order. It's four straight, set down by the right hander. His spot is due up first when we come back. The difference is drinkability our Bud Light what's on tap game two tomorrow night and we'll start things off with the pregame show at 530 on Fox Sports Midwest the Braves and the Cardinals game two tomorrow night. Cardinals send Kyle Loge against Jojo Reyes and then on Wednesday night Adam Wainwright Javier Vasquez then we'll see the first of four against Washington. And three of the four games against Washington will be on Fox Sports Midwest. So here's the pinch hitter for the pitcher, Jurgens, Omar Infante. His last home run came at the expense of Pinheiro last July 31st. 99 pitches for Jurgens tonight. As he gives up six base hits and a couple of runs. And Fonte came over from the Chicago Cubs along with lefty Will Ullman at the time back in 2007. Originally signed by the Tigers back in 1999. You'll see only 53 pitches so far for Pinheiro. The pitching was such a key in that homestand. Pinheiro in his last start was fantastic for the Cardinals. Pinheiro was good. You had Wainwright pitching well on Friday night. How about Ryan Franklin? Three saves in three games. No hits allowed during the homestand. Infante with a base hit out to left. Duncan playing very deep out there in left field. So the tying run is on to start the bottom of the sixth. Fourth hit allowed by Pinheiro. Second time that it's been a leadoff hit. And Breaking ball that stays on the inside part of the plate, just hammered out to left. It's already turned one double play. Can they get a second? Johnson's hit a couple balls on the ground. We'd love to see another one. 
He's grounded out to second, also grounded out to Pools, unassisted at first. Now Thurston is near the line and also playing about four or five steps in on the grass, and Brendan Ryan is close to the bag at second, so pretty big uh, hole over there in the left side of the infield. Kelly Johnson really struggled against right handed pitching right now. Just six for 43. But the left handed hitter is batting 320 when batting against the left handed pitcher. So there you see the ground outs, the fly outs, and no strikeouts tonight. But without the strikeouts, you keep the pitch count low. Here's the 0 1. Hit out of play, no balls and two strikes. When you're young, you're you fall in love with the strikeout. And you think that's the most important stat. It's how many people you strike out. If you get a little older and get a little wiser, you start thinking, you know, a minimum might take three pitches to strike somebody out. But if I can retire a guy on one or two pitches, I'll stay in the game a lot longer. And the 0-2, Pinheiro may have slowed it down. Ryan steps on the bag in a double play. Another good play by Brendan Ryan. Did Pinheiro catch a little bit of that? I, I don't think so. I, I thought it went through the legs as we've seen him make <laughs> miraculous skate saves, and I think he's happy that it he missed it. And then Brendan Ryan having to deal with the second base bag. He actually fielded on the first base side of second. Now that's his third fine He's defensive very, play. Exactly right. And there's another example of letting the the opposition hit the ball, pitching to contact, and how it'll keep you in games. And that's a strike at the knees. So here it is again, as we told you, playing towards the bag, towards the middle, right through the legs of Pinheiro, and then the double play. Stepping for the bag and throwing all in one motion. He has had an outstanding defensive game, Brendan Ryan. He had that short hop to start the double play back in the fourth. David Ross hit one in the hole the next inning. He made a sliding, stopping a backhand to stop his momentum to make that play, and then playing towards the middle there to field it, step on the bag, and go to first. So three very fine defensive plays. The Cardinals' defense, by the way, they've committed 20 errors, which is the most right now in baseball. Well. Over the course of the year, it's hard to lead the league in errors and win a division. And right now, they've been scoring enough they can overcome it. Pinheiro, bare hands, fires to first, safe. So an infield hit, and it brings in Chipper Jones. Pinheiro, to me, is the best fielding pitcher on the staff, and here he tries to make an outstanding play, reaches down, didn't have a time to put the exchange and really got everything behind the throw. But Escobar beats it out on a close play at first for the infield single. Two outs, and you got Chipper Jones. Just be careful. I'm sure this would surprise you too. The most surprising thing to me out of the 20 years is that nine of those have been committed by Khalil Green and, and Albert and Pools. And Albert Pools. Two guys you wouldn't expect. A hanger and a long way to go. This may drop. Thurston can't come up with it. And Duncan is playing very deep, as I mentioned before, out and left. Yeah. So strike one on Chipper Jones. Tough Thurston, play here for Thurston. Yeah, Thurston's given everything he can to try and catch that ball, just eluded him. Started losing his balance a little bit or started ran so hard that it started to come back on him. But you have to appreciate that effort. Remember, you have a shift on too. Not like a quite like a Delgado, but because of the shift, Thurston near playing, you know, a little bit to to the left of where the shortstop would normally play. And then Brendan Ryan, who a lot of times on those type of the shortstop is better angle, but he's playing too close to the second base bag to get close. Twice Jones is grounded out to second. One ball, one strike. Over 400 career home runs for the switch hitter. Only two players better as far as switch hitters are concerned in that home run department. The Nick and Eddie Murray. And Eddie Murray. He's got 410 career home runs from the switch hitter. 
Throw down to first. They got him. Out at first. He's done it again. Molina to Pujols and Escobar. Gunned down at first base as he's picked off. Remarkable how many times that combination has worked. Baseball tonight on Fox Sports Midwest is brought to you by McDonald's. Come into McDonald's today and get any large soft drink or sweet tea for just one dollar. By Jeep Employee Pricing Plus. It ends April 30th. Hurry into your Chrysler and Jeep dealers. And by AT&T. Switch to the nation's fastest 3G network. AT&T. Your world delivered. We're Turner Field in Atlanta. And the Cardinals own a 2-1 lead. They've out hit the Braves 6-5 in this game. And a new pitcher is in Peter Moylan who throws from the right side for Bobby Cox. He's coming off uh, last season he appeared seven games and then had Tommy John surgery. And this is Brendan Ryan on the first pitch a swing and a miss. It's our Chevrolet call to the bullpen. This young man is from Australia. And after watching him in the World Baseball Classic the Braves really liked what they saw. Initially signed by Minnesota. Like I said, he had the Tommy John surgery, so Bobby Cox has used him as this is his tenth appearance, but tries to be very careful not to use him in back-to-back -back days. Here's a ground ball. Escobar has to be quick with a strong arm and gets Brendan Ryan by a step. Rafael Fercal, there was a lot of folks thinking that he was on his way to Atlanta, and most people believe that he was until the last hour. Resigned with the Dodgers, and he possesses a gun, and so does this young man, Yanel Escobar. Yeah, I mentioned Dunstan is a guy that had great arm, and reminds me of the quote that Whitey Herzog had. You know, somebody was asking, well, how, how did the Dunstan, how did the Cubs draft Dunstan ahead of uh, Doc Gooden? And Whitey said, well, he's got a better arm. And we saw that even at the end of his career. Sure. It's Tony La Russa used him in that utility role, played the outfield, good enough athlete to do that. He could run. And he had an absolute cannon for an arm. Here's Joel Pinheiro, sacrificed back in the second. He's 0 for 1. Also grounded out to short. More than drops down, and that's a strike. One ball, one strike. Frank Wren said the worst thing that could happen in the offseason is for some of the names that maybe we're interested in getting out into the press being leaked. All you heard about here in Atlanta was Jake Peavy trying to pick him up. <laughs> Rafael Furcal, A.J. Burnett. Talk of Ken Griffey Jr. coming to the Atlanta Braves because of the proximity to his Orlando home. And none of them came to fruition. I think it's been neat to see Griffey back in Seattle. So an absolute gun by Yadier Molina with the pickoff of Escobar in a key spot in this game. We're talking about their most dangerous bat and the guy that can hit it out of the park and put them on top and instead of having a runner on with Chipper Jones now he leads it off. But he and Pools just have that down Molina and Albert. Yeah and you know every first base coach Glenn Hubbard tonight tells these guys watch out for Molina's ability to throw and that's a one out walk to Pinheiro let's go back to the uh, bottom of the sixth and the defense for the Cardinals and we'll start it with a double play Brendan Ryan playing towards the bag through Pinheiro's leg steps on the bag and there's your double play the second the Cardinals have turned and here it is second time this happened this year Molina has done that I mean, he ranks up there all time now. What is that, 26th or 27th? I think 27 now. I think so. 26 was the one that he did on Daniel Murphy in the Mets right. back uh, in St. Louis. Yeah, and how can you not be aware of the weapon he possesses? I mean, you know about stealing. He's the best, and guys are trying to steal against him in the major leagues, but 
the added dimension of that ability to throw behind the runner and pick him off on first. And don't think for a second, especially with a left-handed bat up there, that Glenn Hubbard is telling that runner, yeah. first base coach, you have to watch out for Molina. Exactly. Floats in there for a ball, one ball, one strike on Schumacher. And I bet you that's one of the things that Albert Poole is you know, the consummate professional and teammate. You know, if you were asked about him hitting a home run today, he'd probably talk about Molina's picking off another one. And with Schumacher up and a pitcher at first, Kochman is playing behind that runner. And there goes Pinheiro. And this is chopped. This will be a tough play. Moylan steps and throws. Good call, Dan, but you know, there's another thing advanced scouting, particularly with Pinheiro. You know, he's going to help out his own cause and he'll get into the running game. You don't hold him on, he'll steal a base on. You. Tony LaRusse, of course, has used him as a pinch runner with a short bench. More times than not, he'll use Wainwright as a pinch hitter for the starting five. This is where you get the feeling Ann Keel could really do some damage. You've got Pujols on deck. Moylan knows that. Doesn't want to face Albert with runners on. She's going to get some pitches to hit here. And remember you're going to see a side armor that a left handed batter really gets a good look at the release point. One ball no strikes on Ricky and Keel who picked up a two out base hit back in the second and that scored Joe Thurston who had walked in the inning and that's the difference right now in the game that lead off walk by Thurston back in the top of the second. The 1 0. And Keel, the ground ball up the middle. That's a base hit. Here comes Pinheiro. Schaefer's throw to the plate, not in time. And the Cardinals have a two run lead. It's 3 1. And Rick and Keel with a pair of RBIs. And every run scored in this game has come with two outs. Very effective. You know, you got two outs. So Pinheiro can get a good jump, take off on contact. Playing him in the hole and just bounces it through. Not hit particularly hard, but effectively placed in his second RBI. He's up to eight now in the young season, and Pinheiro has a two run lead. Brings in pool holes who singled through the hole between third and short. His last time up, he's also struck out and flied out to shallow center on a 3 0 pitch. He hit it a mile high. It was back in the second inning. Kelly Johnson just like Skip Schumacher two guys in this game playing second base that are familiar playing the outfield. And Johnson of course was replaced by Omar Infante who was part of that double switch. A little quicker move that time by Moylan. I hope you have a chance of picking off a runner or facing Albert. I think pick him off. <laughs> Peters understands that very well. Two outs. First pitch to Pools. Taken for a strike. How about the Florida Marlins? Got off to that 11 and 1 start. They've lost six in a row and are losing six to one to the Mets tonight. All comes on the wash, didn't it? In the oh, baseball yeah. season. Don't print your World Series tickets too soon. Florida up by a game and a half. On Philly, Atlanta two games out, then the Mets three back in Washington, six and a half out. Washington is four and thirteen. The poorest start of any team right now in the league. Quickly 0 and 2. Now we've got to look at that breaking ball right now and that ball just ended up right over the middle of the plate and tries that again. I think it gets crushed. How many times do you think Pujols has set up a pitcher? Has he done that here? Easy Rick. Didn't look very comfortable going back in. No. 
Wasn't sure if he wanted to slide or dive back in and stayed straight up. Here's the 0-2 pitch. And Keel is running and a swing and a miss. Albert strikes out for the second time. Albert Pujols helping Joel Pinheiro. The on-deck man telling him to slide. Time to stretch. This Capoeira telecast is presented by the authority of the St. Louis Cardinals and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the St. Louis Cardinals. Brian Bartow. Media relations staff is with us from the uh, St. Louis Cardinals staff. And here's Chipper Jones. First pitch. Line drive out to left. Now the tying run comes to the plate in Kochman. Well, you got left hand hitter, switch hitters from the left side, always going to be low ball hitters. And just good piece of hitting, going the pitch down, not trying to do too much with it, just flare it out there for the base hit. This is the guy you got to get. Kochman is two for two. Cardinals have already turned two double plays. See if they can't get a third. His first two hits against Pinheiro for Kochman. He came in 0 for 9 against him in his career. Those two had had a little bit of a history over in the American League. First pitch, got it up in the zone a little bit, but hard to put it in play. Got a head strike one. Cardinals leading the National League Central Division by a game and a half over Pittsburgh. Redbirds off to a 13 and 6 start. Good pitch, tailing action in there for a strike. There's a great example of it right there is the ball. Right at the last second had that good movement down and away. No activity for the Cardinals in the bullpen, no need yet. Frank Cor is on deck, and Pinero wants to roll through the signs again. He's ahead in the count, 0-2. He's got something in mind other than what uh, Molina wants to throw. And that's drilled down the right field line. One hops off the wall and Chipper Jones on his way to third and it's second and third now and nobody out. I think it's fair to say he should have stayed with what Molina wanted. Shook him off twice, took off the changeup, and then he throws the pitch right down the middle and gets hammered into the corner. And let's go pitch by pitch presented by Chevrolet. Ball up there and everything, but he fouls it off. Then the good sinker, 0 and 2. Shook him off a couple times to change up through another fastball is in the middle of the plate and hammered into the corner. In steps Fran Cor, second and third, and nobody out. Bullpen now active for the Cardinals. Frank Cor into center. And Keel will make the catch. He'll fire it back into the shortstop. Brendan Ryan. Chipper Jones scores to make it three to two. That's three now hard hit balls in the seventh inning. At least on that play, Jones scores, but staying put, Kochman at second. Well, uh, Rick was a hard hit line drive right at him, but he got back on it to where he got his momentum moving forward. And he was right in line to, to make a throw. So respecting his reputation and throwing arm, the Cochman stays at second. Here's Brandon Jones. Come on, One run lead for the Cardinals. <laughs> RBI number 13 for Fran Cor. Two balls and no strikes. No walks to the Braves here tonight. But Pinero's fallen and the count 2 and 0. Uh, Molina will go out and try to slow things down a little bit. That will allow Perez to warm up in the Cardinal bullpen. Uh, 
On deck, it's David Ross. Bobby Cox with a switch hitter, Norton on his bench, but nobody from the left side. Everybody else is from the right side. Uh, Norton is an excellent pitch hitter that just finally got his first pinch hit base hit of the, of the year over the weekend. Prado, one of those right-handed batters, has had success in the history against Britton Yarrow. Here's a 2-0 pitch. And Jones lets it go right on by. Two and one. Brandon Jones is grounded out to second and also flied out to left to Duncan. The 2 1 pitch on its way. Strike two. Foul tip into the glove of Molina. So after falling behind 2 0, he's battled back to even the count. Start tiring a little bit. Your legs go first and it elevates your pitches. Get on top of that sinker. 2 2. Reach four and put out a play. Change up there, but it was a little bit high, but it was far enough away that Jones could only could do is reach for it. Nero still only thrown 75 pitches. Basically, two to one strike to ball ratio. Get the ball down. And he did. Chased a ball outside. A strikeout and a big one for Pinheiro. And that is his first of the night when he needed it. Strikeout, got the change up and kind of got him reaching for it. And Tony coming out and going to go to the bullpen. So can take him out with six and two thirds innings. And that'll be it for Pinheiro. I think Pinheiro's a little surprised that he's coming out of this game after getting that strikeout. As you talked about, his pitch count, very reasonable at this point to keep him in. Uh, you're going to make sure that he has a chance to win this game. So here comes Chris Perez, the hard thrower. Our Chevrolet call to the bullpen. First pitch by Perez was taken for a ball by David Ross. This season, Perez, this will be his sixth appearance, five and two-thirds. He has struck out eight and walked five. Opponents only hitting 100 against him. By taking Pinheiro out now, you guarantee that he can only be the winner or a, not, a no decision. And remember, Ross hit the RBI double his first time up. The second time up, Brendan Ryan had made the very fine play in the hole. So he's hit the ball hard twice. And just Tony likes this percentage of using Perez to retire him now. Pinheiro only threw 76 pitches. That's it. Which makes it a little bit surprising with the way that he threw the ball tonight that he would take him out, but it is early in the season. And you think about the lack of off days and the fact that you're trying to, you know, make sure you save your starters early in a season. That could be part of the thinking by Tony yeah. LaRusso. And just I think too that they just saw that he was getting the ball hey, up and wanted a fresh arm, a power arm to come in here against David Ross. Remember David Ross against Isringhausen a couple of years ago put one on top of that boat in center in yeah. Cincinnati. He's got pretty good power if he gets into one. Defense has been a story tonight for the Cardinals along with the pitching of Pinheiro and two out base hits. There's a good slider and a strikeout of David Ross move pays off we head to the eighth Ludwig leads it off when we come back let's take a look at the infinity game recap that was early on and two out hits 
have been a story. Duncan and Keel. And how about the defense of Brendan Ryan? Smooth at shortstop tonight. There's a double play ball through the legs of Pinheiro that eventually wound up to Brendan Ryan. The pickoff by Molina, the pool holes. Second time they've done that this year. Our infinity game recap. Former Mariner Rafael Soriano is into the ball game. This will be his ninth appearance. A couple of saves already for Soriano. An opponent's only hitting 125 against him. He's not allowed a home run. And this has been a bullpen that's been beaten up a little bit, as Al told you. Braves bullpen ERA 5.44. That's 23rd the majors and 15th in the National League. Well, they got off to a slow start. They've gotten a little better, but Soriano's another guy that's coming off of the nerve transposition surgery. So another guy that they try to protect a little bit. He's their right-handed closer. And here is Ludwig, who is one for three. Ludwig with a base hit back in the first. Line shot into center field. Ooh. Dove a little bit on Schaefer, and he makes the catch. A little nonchalant. We've seen that a couple of times out there in center. It's one thing if Andrew Jones is doing it, but if you're Jordan Schaefer and you're just trying to make your mark in the big leagues, that's another thing. Yeah. And highly touted prospect. Here is Duncan. Kyle McClellan is getting loose in the Cardinal bullpen. Duncan with that RBI single back in the first to give him 13 ribbies on the year. Schaefer made a nice play on the track against Duncan a second time up. And he's also popped out to third. Sure would love to have some insurance runs, but you talked about it. You know, the really Achilles heel of last year for Bobby Cox was that inability to win close games. One run games. 11 and 30 last year. Gonna break your back. I remember Bobby just talking about that, you know, just some of them were ridiculous where they ended up one run games but uh, where his team would battle back get it close and then they could never get over the hump. The 2 0 pitch to Duncan. Inside 3 0. Well lean on deck. What is it about Bobby Cox that has made him through all the years where guys are making big money and superstars that he's dealt with over the years but has made him so good. Well I, I think a lot of it's just a, you know he's, he's a very steady you know he doesn't get too excited he used to get real excited about things but you know he had that core group of pitchers that we talked about not only were they winners but they were clubhouse leaders and they and they kept everybody not to uh, you know get off page that Bobby runs a tight ship. You know, it's, it's a fair ship. You don't have any tremendous amount of rules. Just follow the simple rules he has and don't buck the trend. Let the players police themselves, so to speak. And you can do that when you have good leaders that lead you the right way. When you think about Charlie Manuel in, in Philly, he's got two rules show up and be on time and hustle. Right. Be on time and be hustle. Be on time, hustle. I mean, think about what he did with a former MVP and Jimmy Rollins. Remember he benched him a couple of times. Sure. You know, I mean, sometimes you have to do it when even your better players when they step out of line a little bit. Of course, Ken Boyer, and I played with him in the Meyer Leagues his first year, he had one more rule. If there's a fight, you better be out there. <laughs> Helping out. What do you do if you're Tony La Russa here? We've talked about Molina's ability to hit the other way. You could think about a hit and run with one out. Also, Molina can handle the bat and sacrifice in this spot but do you do that with a guy that's hitting close to 350 and, and you know the one trend has always been uh, in this game is two out uh, base hits scoring runs so but if Molina and he's very capable and a good bunter but if he punts it right at somebody it's a double play and now with two strikes that may be out of the conversation. I think it's also an indicator what they think how much he's emerged as an offensive player. That exactly. You don't think those terms anymore. And a swing and a miss. Molina strikes out. You don't see him taking advantage of that often either. 
And it's up to Joe Thurston. Thurston walked and scored in the second. He's also flied out to right and grounded back to the pitcher. As mentioned before that McClellan is getting loose in the bullpen and uh, he's emerging as the eighth inning guy and then Ryan Franklin as your closer. And I, I think it's it's really as this bullpen's fallen into place that you're going to see more and more of Mott and Perez pitching in the sixth and seventh innings just like Chris came in here today. And that's really where they belong. Get the experience in those levels. They'll get enough exposure. You're not big though, and you were a bullpen guy, obviously. You're not big on, on saying this this is the defined role for player X. No. I mean, I guys mean, need to be interchangeable in some respect. Well, yeah, because I mean, but you also have to be smart enough. And it's a terrible excuse to say, well, I'm pitching in the sixth inning and I'm used to pitching the seventh. You know, you can see the game you develop, and you know why why you're going to come in a certain situation. You know somebody else is not available tonight. You know you're going to pitch in that range where it's close enough that you don't have to have defined rules. Two strikes now on uh, Thurston. He got the start at third and the man on deck Brendan Ryan had short. I mentioned in describing Brendan as smooth. He has looked good at shortstop. More comfortable there more so than at second and at third. 0 oh, 2. Thurston strikes out. Jordan Schaefer will lead it off when we come back to Turner Field in Atlanta. Bottom of the eighth rolls in here at Turner Field in Atlanta. There's a look at Brian Barton. He is at third. Schumacher moves from second to left, and then Joe Thurston moves from third to second. And the new pitcher in for the Cardinals is Kyle McClellan. McClellan first pitch a strike to Schaefer and he didn't like it. Numbers impressive for Kyle the St. Louis in 1 and 0 1.80 ERA and opponents only hitting 184 against him. There's the breaking ball lifted out to right and a leadoff base hit as Ludwig kept it in front. So the tying run is on. Schaefer has two home runs but you wonder was it a little bit deep. As that breaking ball, they belt high and was hit out to right field. And it brings in Infante, who certainly you could think about sacrificing right here. Stayed in the game after he entered in the sixth with a pinch hit single. He bunts. McClellan's only play is to first and pull holes there. So the tying run in scoring position. And again, the Braves and the Cardinals, the two best right now with runners in scoring position in the National League. Well, interesting, and we can't see the sight lines, but you wonder if you've got one of the lefties warming up right now. Miller and Reyes both pitched yesterday. And this is the switch hitter, Norton. Norton is their number one pinch hitter. He's been a good one over the years. Off to a very slow start this year. And one for 14. He got that one. He was 0 for 12 before he got a pinch hit over the weekend. And du and double. Good breaking ball and I talked to Cal yesterday about his curveball. He said it hasn't been as consistent as I'd like it to be but when I need it to be one of my better ones I'm able to get it. I'm able yeah. to find it. This year Norton led the majors with three pinch hit home runs 18 pinch hit RBIs. And he also had 17 pinch hit walks and ranked second with his 18 pinch hits. One and one the count. Norton pinch hitting for Johnson. There's another nice curveball in there for strike two. Norton didn't like the call, but he couldn't pull the trigger. Escobar is on deck. The tying run at second base. Good speed in Jordan Schaefer. Brendan Ryan trying to keep him close to the bag at second. Thank you. Two and two. 
Very close that time. Call goes Norton's way on the breaking ball. Trying to backdoor it. Cal had a rough spring, but that means nothing because his regular season so far has been terrific. The 2 2. You see Molina going back and forth, making sure that he doesn't give that hitter any edge as to where that pitch might be. He started out outside and hop back in. Now you watch and make sure the guy's not a peeker. Look back to look to location and then set up at the last second. The 3 2, and he walked him. So Norton draws the one out walk, and now a force play at third and at second. So Cardinals would love the double play here. They've turned two so far tonight. With Escobar's speed, though, that's tough to do. It had to be a hard hit ball. Inning started with a single to right by Schaefer, sacrificed by Infante. The walk to the pinch hitter, Norton. And now Escobar. Shallow left center. Catch made by Ricky and Keel. Two outs and Chipper Jones. This could be the ball game right here. Well, sure could be. And is any one run game you know it gets down we talked about how you don't want chipper to beat you and Dave Duncan will come out and hit a little quick scout report go over the circumstances and a terrific hitter in his career and that's just where you live for these matchups nine times in his career chipper Jones has hit 300 or above. Last year, his best yet at 364. Where's Chief Nakahoma? Remember the Chief? Sure. Old Atlanta Fulton County sure. Stadium. Had his TP up in left field. Come out and make a little dance when the rally was about to happen. They still got the chop, but when it's not a packed house, it loses a little, doesn't it? Loses its uh, <laughs> chopping luster. <laughs> it certainly does. So here we go. First and second, two outs. We're in the eighth in a 3-2 game, and Chipper Jones, last year's batting champion at the plate. As you talked about, it doesn't matter right now from either side. He came in hitting 333 from both right and left. And he's one for three in this game. Home think, run from each side. Think about the speed. Schaefer, the time run at second base. Two balls, no strikes on Jones. This where Chipper is so good because he's a veteran, he's patient. Many times he will not chase. Well, a couple cutters coming in on him and up in the count, 2-0. You know, Kochman on deck. Well, Kochman tonight is three for three with a pair of doubles, but they don't want any part of Chipper appears right now. The base is loaded. Chipper said something to Kochman as he takes first base. And with our vantage point, we have not been able to see whether or not there's a lefty getting loose for the Cardinals in the pen to face Kochman here. Well, you would assume that this would be Kyle's last inning. And you could make a strong case that you know, if you got Dennis, Dennis Reyes down there, there's been an optimum time to bring him in. Base is loaded. Breaking ball taken upstairs. Kochman tonight. Three hits, two doubles and a single. Tying run at third, the go ahead run at second.
Big rip. Fouled back. The fastball after an awful lot of breaking balls to these lefties. These two have never faced each other. That's one of the reasons why Tony may have not elected to bring in a lefty. Cotsman's batting 360 against left-handed pitching in the young season and just 231 before tonight against right-handers, but he's three for three. Two and one the count. And a fly ball into shallow right. McClellan is out of the jam. Cardinals lead the Braves 3-2 in the ninth here at Turner Field. Coming up on U.S. Cellular Cardinals Live, Jim Hayes and Jack Clark going to break this one down. They'll talk about Albert Pujols' powerful April. They'll talk about uh, the fact that the Cardinals may actually be able to win a game without a uh, strikeout or at least just one strikeout from the starting pitcher. And we'll go inside the Cardinal clubhouse as well. That's all coming up right after the game on U.S. Cellular Cardinals Live. Guys, see you then. All right, Pat, thanks. One of the stories, though, for the Cardinals tonight the defensive play of Brendan Ryan at shortstop. And there's a look at uh, the new pitcher for the Braves. We've seen Jurgens. He went six innings. Moylan an inning. Soriano an inning. And now it is ben Jeff Bennett. Nine innings so far. Nine strikeouts. A couple of walks. The young year. So Brendan Ryan, Brian Barton, then Skip Schumacher. This would be a nice way to start this road trip. Getting a start like that from Pinheiro. And good bullpen work so far. Perez, third of an inning, and you see the numbers on Bennett. He got the big strikeout of David Ross with the tying run at second base in the seventh. And then with the bases loaded, McClellan gets out of the jam against Kochman. Brendan Ryan is 0 for 3. He's fly to center, grounded out to third, and also grounded out to short. But has really done a nice job defensively. Yes. Al. And he's made three very, very nice plays. And really, you know, hitless to this point, over three, almost beat out an infield hit his last time out. And Ross wants to talk to Bennett. His third year in the big leagues. When are you able to buy Green a night off and possibly win this game? Well, that's it. And, and you know, to win another game on the road in the first game of a series. Jeff Bennett out of Tennessee. He was with Milwaukee back in 2004 07. Appeared with the Braves Major League Club is. Brendan hits it to his counterpart at short. Escobar, nice play. He is slick at short. You can see where some of these young players for the Braves are going to be very good. And got that great throwing arm, too. We've seen it on display a couple times. Well, Bennett last year, out of necessity, actually made four starts for Bobby Cox's club. Six and 13 in his major league career. And six out of 135 starts have been, or 135 appearances have been starts. And first plate appearance of the night for Barton. There's a strike, and they've got the wrong <laughs> Barton up. Barton. They well, got the name right, well, just and, wrong and, picture. And Mr. Barton is now property of the Atlanta Braves, so you'd think they'd know a little different. Came over in the Blaine Boyer deal. Yeah. Barden, how about uh, in the Cubs series, three for three, homestand, he was four for nine. And his second three hit game of the season Saturday. Well, you talked to him, and he's finally feeling healthy, and that's probably the main difference for him this year. Yeah, I just misdiagnosed abdominal strain for a couple years, uh, it was a hernia, and finally had that uh, corrected this offseason. And now starting to feel much better and on the last road trip he hit his first three major league home runs. 
The other thing too, Al, for these guys that you know they're unsure going into spring training whether or not they're going to make the team. Then they do. It's so important for them to get off to a, a good start and feel comfortable at this level that they should be here and all of a sudden they start to contribute. Well you look at his minor league numbers you know he was he was always a pretty good offensive player and showed some pop in the bat. Just guided that one into right field here comes Bobby Cox and this is our Hardy's prime cut of the game two out base hits a story tonight for the Cardinals and Ricky and Keel with two of those base hits and a couple of RBIs Ricky and Keel now with eight on the year. So Barden picks up the one out base hit. That'll be it for Bennett. And we head back to the top of the lineup. Skip Schumacher due up. Fifth pitcher used by Bobby Cox tonight. Eric O'Flaherty, the former Seattle Mariner. He was claimed off of waivers by the Braves from Seattle back in November. But Flaherty was 7 and 1 for the Mariners back in 2007. And that's pulled foul. One thing about Bobby Cox, you know he's trying to get the lefty lefty matchup here, but Skip Schumacher has been much better against left handed pitching this year. Well, still makes sense. And but Bobby going from past history, he hit 195 against left handed pitching, 340 against right handers, but it, just the familiarity. He's seen so many more lefties this year. He's He's got a good chance now. Back in 2007, lefties only hit 183 against him, and he allowed only one extra base hit to a left handed batter, and that was J.D. Drew in 2007, the year that he had seven wins. And seven games last year with Seattle, he had an ERA over 20. So, see why he was. Available for the waiver pickup by Atlanta, trying to get back into a groove. A 2 2 pitch to Skip Schumacher. Good cut, fouled back. And fastball right out over the plate and holding that front shoulder in, not bailing. I was about to say, that's what you see with Schumacher this year against the lefties. Well, you know, and Dan, it's just, you know, when you never face him, you know, you're going to be a Good little point. bit lost out there. So now he's getting a chance to see him and you know, and he's holding his own ground. 2 2. Slices that one foul. And the first thing you try to, first way to do it is, you know, you instead of falling away or starting your running swing, you know, you just try to think opposite field up the mo middle and you hold that front shoulder in. And you know you're going to get a lot of breaking balls. And so you try to take that to the opposite field. 2 2 pitch. Three and two. Runner at first is Barton. Let's see if the Cardinals want to start him. Ricky and Keel on deck. Cardinals trying to hold on. It's three to two here in the top of the ninth. And we would assume that Ryan Franklin is getting loose in the Cardinal pin. Yes. Barton's not running. It's slowly hit to second. And Schumacher retired, and here we go again with two outs. Ricky and Keel, a chance to do some damage. And Keel with two two out base hits. Now Rick a little different situation you know where Schumacher is been taking the ball the opposite field those breaking balls are facing a lot of lefties. If you've got a good breaking ball down the way you've got a good chance that Rick will not make contact. If you make hang one or leave one over the middle part of the plate, he might lose it. What was interesting about that home run with the Cubs against the Cubs is that they tried to go up the ladder with him as he'll chase that pitch, but that time he was able to catch up and knock it over the wall. One ball, one strike. Nankiel struck out back in the first, RBI single in the second. Fly to right in the fifth and an RBI single in the seventh with two outs. Albert Pujols on deck. Two and one. So Rick has seen a lot more left handers too so he's able to lay off those pitches that are out of the strike zone. You got to get it up a little bit and if you can keep it away from him so he'll keep on trying. Oh hit by the pitch. And it brings up Pujols. Well, we'll probably have another pitching change. <laughs> 
Tony La Russa and Barry Weinberg will check on the hand of Ricky and Keel. I always worry when you get hit on the hand. Try to go away, but the ball misses totally the location. I'm not sure if it didn't get him in the arm. In the arm, yeah. And below the wrist. Yeah, he got it on the arm. Pujols coming up. The 3 2 game. 6 3, 210 pounder Buddy Carlisle. And he'll get Albert Pujols here with runners at first and second in a one run game. We're in the ninth. Cardinals lead it 3 to 2. Uh, Cardinals walked Chipper Jones in this spot. Will they do the same here with pool holes and load them up and deal with Ludwig? Well, it wouldn't be intentional if they did, but uh, Carlisle usually is, fires a lot of strikes. He's retired the first batter in all five of his previous appearances. Could be the uh, unintentional intentional. Just don't give him anything to hit. Well, now that you've fallen behind, whoa. Oh. In, Infante was very late in covering. The so catcher, you know, Barden was well off there, but he knew his second baseman he went near. So he fires it right over the bag, and Infante at the last second sprints to dive for that ball. Three and one on pools. As deep as Schaefer is, too, and that would have been interesting to see what the Cardinals would have done. Sure, the center fielder playing extremely deep, deepest of all the outfielders. Here's a 3 1. 3 and 2 on Pools. Albert has struck out twice here this evening. He also has a single back in the fifth and has flied out to uh, center. Very, very deep for Albert Pools. Really, the corner outfielders aren't that deep. Yeah, I'm looking at Schaefer. You're right. Schaefer, the, the center fielder is extremely deep, but 3 2. They're off with this pitch. Have we, two outs. have we ever seen three strikeouts? I don't think so, ever. Probably has happened, but. Ooh. Oh, <laughs> right on it. It's happened, but it's few and far between. Buddy Carlisle out of Omaha, Nebraska, signed by the Braves as a minor league free agent back in 2006. A 3 2 pitch. Mislocation. Pool holes was ready for it. <laughs> Wanted it outside, got it in, and he ripped it. Some people on that left, left field line are glad it hit, didn't reach the stands. Hit below the wall. By the way, Al, unofficially, eight times it has happened where he struck out three times in a game in his. So once a year. Yeah, eight year career. Time call. The bench watching intently. The 3 2. We'll do it again. Looking ahead to the bottom of the ninth, Francoeur, Jones, and Ross do up for Atlanta. So right now, Bobby Cox has one right hander available and his closer from the left side Gonzalez that's it in his bullpen. Slider just got a piece of it. Nine pitches this is bad for pools. This is the kind of thing too where Pools, no matter what happens, he remembers these at bats and just just files it away. Well, Buddy Carlisle usually is going to challenge people. He's going to throw strikes, but right now, you get this extensive at bat, a walk wouldn't be the worst thing. 
seen pool holes out in front just a little bit. Yeah, I mean just a little bit. But like I say, you know, when you when you throw this many pitches to a the best hitter of this generation, you know, you're just asking for trouble. You may get away with one, but usually when he sees this many pitches, he's going to get finally get your mistake. Already 25 RBIs and seven home runs for Albert. Here it comes. And Pujols launches one into left center field. Just got underneath it. The catch is made right in front of the track. Cardinals baseball from Atlanta is brought to you by Budweiser who thanks you for being a designated driver and by Bank of America Cardinals banking only at Bank of America change for the Cardinals defensively Colby Rasmus is from this area takes over in center and a new pitcher in for the Cardinals and that is Ryan Franklin their closer. Tony may not say he's the closer but he's been closing games out team high five saves that's tied for fourth in the National League led the Cardinals relievers in saves wins innings pitched appearances last season and their first save leader other than Isringhausen since 2001 a couple of games shy now of 400 for his career Frank Hoare trying to tie it up. And Franklin has been excellent. First batter retired, seven for seven. May have got away with that pitch. It was up and over the middle of the plate. See Molina wants it a little bit lower this time. That's up and fouled back. But, you know, Dan, that really that first pitch coming at bat. It, it's almost amazing to track it to see how infrequent does a guy put it in play. Or get a base hit with it. But most of the time, if they swing at it, they either miss it or they foul it back. Always try and get ahead in the count. There's a broken bat, and it's caught by Pools. Almost popped out of his glove. Well, Albert ranges so far to his right. This time, it really pays off. When the ball gets down. It's a base hit. Shatters the bat. Albert going over and just gets a little snow cone, but holds on to it. And that first batter retired once again. Brings in Brandon Jones. These two have not faced each other. We've got David Ross then on deck. Breaking ball in there for a strike. With all the scatter reports too, you know that they've told Jones and Ross and Schaefer if he comes up. Oh, by the way, Ryan Franklin possesses about six different pitches. That's in the back of your mind. He's thrown them. Two different ones to start this at bat. Right. Breaking ball and then look like maybe splitter. You know, he doesn't have the overpowering stuff, Ryan Franklin, but he's 36. He's been around a long time. He can get people out. They throw that ball in the 90s, you know, in the low 90s, 92. He's got very good movement, Al. He keeps it low. He's smart. And the one thing, too, that really is a benefit is he can retire left handed batters a lot because of that splitter. One and two the count and time is called. Trying to get together. David Ross by the way is on deck has never faced Franklin either. One two pitch. Here it comes. Ooh. Just missed two and two. Pretty good pitch. Very close there as a splitter. So here we are another one run game for Bobby Cox. The 2 2. And the 3 2 pitch. Throw that splitter 3 2 pitch to a rookie, you got him. But if he takes it, you know, it's ball four. He slices this one down the left field line and foul. 
The outfield has changed with Schumacher in left, Rasmus in center. And Keel is out of the ball game. Yeah, and I, and I don't think it has anything to do with being hit by a pitch. It's just that you you put Rasmus in there, and you put uh, where he would come up next inning if it got in the scoring position or they tied the score. A 3 2 pitch. Little chopper. Joe Thurston. The pool is a nice play at first. <laughs> it's not what you expect in a sinker. <laughs> so, two away, and let's take a look at the Budweiser player of the game. Budweiser, the great American lager. A lot of choices. And Joel Pinheiro gets our player of the game. Six and two thirds, seven hits, couple of runs. Both those earned. No walks, only one strikeout. That's it. Pinheiro, Perez, McClellan, now Franklin. It's 14 and two thirds innings in Pinheiro's last two starts with only one strikeout. The potential being 2 and 0. Oh. That's more important, isn't it? Yeah. Strike on the outside corner and a chance to go to 4 0 this year. And Ross didn't like it. Trying to extend this game. The 0 1 pitch. 0 and 2. Best record against the National League East, the Cardinals, since 2008, 25 and 14. Cardinals, of course, with a bunch of games with the East coming up right here. And then Washington will see the Phillies in our next home stand, too. Here's an 0-2 pitch. Franklin to Ross. Got him, and the Cardinals take the first game of the series. 3-2 to two the final. Two out RBI base hits, a story. Joel Pinheiro, the defense of Brendan Ryan, and a solid win out for the Cardinals. Well, very good, and we keep that trend. You know, Tony mix and match there. He got his start of the victory. He got a couple holds out of there, and a very important save for Ryan Franklin is he's six for six and save opportunities Win the first game of the series you're well on your way to winning the, the series. Three to two our final tonight Tony La Russa's reaction to the strikeout. Post game show coming up. The game is over. Cardinals win it three to two. Jack Clark and I are here to break down this ball game. Jack, your thoughts on an outstanding effort across the board, particularly the bullpen. The bullpen was outstanding tonight. Just a good old baseball game by both teams. Both managers, you know, battled head to head and made the right moves. And uh, Tony made a few better ones. More on the matchups coming up. We'll have all that plus after an incredibly successful homestand. The Cardinals hit the road for seven. Could they stay hot in Hotlanta? Plus, Joel Pinheiro looking to move to 4 0. For the first time as a starter, was Pinheiro's sinker dominating once again? And just how good has Albert Pujols been this April? We'll break it down. Plus, we'll take you inside the Cardinals Clubhouse in Atlanta for player reaction. Stick around. Cardinals Live is coming up next. Welcome to U.S. Cellular Cardinals Live. Here's an closer. I think we got one. Ryan Franklin, the K to end it. He's six for six and save opportunities. Cards win three to two. Nice way to kick off a seven game road trip. Hello, everybody, and welcome inside our Fox Sports Midwest studios in St. Louis for this post game edition of U.S. Cellular Cardinals Live alongside former Cardinal slugger Jack Clark. I am Jim Hayes, and coming up, we'll break down Joel Pinheiro's start, plus we'll go inside the Cardinal Clubhouse for player reaction and Tony LaRusso's thoughts, and we'll take a look at how good NL Player of the Week Albert Pujols has been so far this April. Jack, your thoughts on tonight's game? Well, obviously a good one for the Cardinals. Well, it was a great game. Uh, coming out, winning that first game on the, on the road trip has got to feel good. It's a well-played game by both teams, and... Uh, you know, they just—I think that, that even that the play by by Tony uh, 
uh, hitting and running with Pinero, getting him to second base to get that go-ahead run. I mean, just everything the Cardinals are doing, all the buttons they're pushing seem to be right. That play by Molina and Pujols over there, another big, huge play with um, – uh, Chipper Jones at the plate to, to make, let him lead off the next inning and take the bat out of his hands. And that's a guy you, you like to take the bat out of his hands as many times as possible. Great game by them. Great pitching. Pinero was awesome tonight. Didn't strike anybody out and didn't get hit very hard either. Big two out hits. We'll have more on that later. Huge. And remember, Cardinal fans, you can get involved with the show with U.S. Cellular Text Time. Rick and I, Rick, I'm sorry, Jack. Jack and I will take your questions or comments we about the Cardinals. Like anyhow. You look alike. Send us a text <laughs> message at 432 432. Please include your first name and where you're texting from in your message. Standard text messaging rates do apply. Let's get things started by heading back to Atlanta. Pat Paris, who caught up with Rick Ankiel, our Mid America Chevrolet Dealers player of the game. Pat. All right, Jim, thank you very much. Uh, Rick, uh, two out RBIs, and you had two of them tonight. I guess that was the key. Yeah, big time. Uh, felt good to come through when the team needed me, and happy to pull out a win. Nice pitching from Joel Pinero. We've seen that now uh, throughout his season, and uh, that's a real shot in the arm for you guys. Absolutely. He's been consistent since day one of spring training. His sinker's been there for him. I think he's been doing an outstanding job, and we're definitely going to need him down the hall. And then you get McClellan. What a what a uh, you know an issue he had there, but he got out of it. Yeah. He's been doing that all season, though. Yeah, he made it exciting there. Got my heart pumping, but uh, you know he got out of it. That's all that matters, and we came we came out on top. All right, you got hit on the arm too. How's it doing? It's all right. I got just enough meat where uh, I'll be okay for tomorrow. So. All right. Well, keep swinging it well, and uh, congratulations on the win tonight. Thank you. All right. That's Rick Ankiel, and uh, he had obviously a couple of very big RBI singles tonight for the Cardinals with this uh, victory over the Braves. Let's send it back to you, Jim and Jack in St. Louis. Pat, nice work. I wanted to know a little bit more about the mustache, and now it's gone. We head back to Turner Field right now to put a wrap on things. It's a view from the booth with the guys who just called the game, Dan McLaughlin and Al Roboski. Gentlemen. Okay, Jim, thanks. Let's take you back to a real key point in this game. There were so many of them to talk about, but one that stands out, uh, the bullpen work of the Cardinals, as Pat mentioned, with Kyle McClellan. Interesting situation here. Bases loaded, game on the line. Chipper Jones was up. And the unintentional, intentional walk to load him up brings in Casey Kochman, and uh, McClellan gets out of the jam. Well, you got it. It was a little bit of jam, and it was uh, interesting as he goes after him, breaking ball way up. He falls behind, you know, then it's one and one. Fouls another breaking ball. He can't pull it down, two and one. Then he gets his swing at this one. It's up in the zone. It was out over the middle of the plate, but just a harmless pop up. And remember, these Braves on their most recent road trip, they scored 27 of their 33 runs with two outs. So that was another scary situation. Al, how about your thoughts on the starter tonight, Joel Pinheiro? Well, I like it. Just keeps on pounding the bottom half of the strike zone, throwing strikes, working both sides of the plate, and getting ground balls. You know, strikeouts are way overrated. Two out hits. That was big tonight with Ricky and Keel getting a couple of RBIs with two outs. And also Brendan Ryan with his defense at short. That's Al. I'm Dan. Let's send it back to Jim and Jack. All right, guys, thanks a lot. Let's uh, roll out some highlights from the Cardinal victory you just saw on Fox Sports Midwest. Top of the first two outs, runners on first and second. Chris Duncan, liner to left, Skip Schumacher comes in from second to score. The Cards go up one to nothing on Duncan's 14th RBI of the year. Next inning, Cardinals do some more damage. Two outs again. Rick Ankiel pulls an outside pitch up the middle for a base hit. Joe Thurston comes around to score. Cards take a two to nothing lead. Ankiel's fifth RBI in his last seven games. Atlanta on the board, two outs in the bottom of the second. David Ross gaps a double to right center. Casey Cosman walks in from third, and that Cardinal lead is cut to two to one. Bottom five now, same score. Brendan Ryan, a little bit of leather work. Ross, a ground ball. Ryan, nice range, and makes the play. Two outs now, top of the seven. Card still up two to one. And Keel. Ground ball up the middle that just gets past the bag. Pinero on his horse. He'll come around to score. Big run. Cards go up three to run, three to one. Bottom seven now. After Pinero gave up a run and leaves the game, Chris Perez comes in two outs and a runner on second. Gets Ross looking. Bottom of the eighth. Kyle McClellan pitching to Casey Kochman. Base is loaded and he jams him up and in. Cardinals keep their lead at three to two. Then we go to the ninth. Ryan Franklin on to close it out, and he does just that as he punches out David Ross. The Cardinals win it. The final three to two as they kick off that seven-game road trip with a win in Atlanta. 
And uh, there are the numbers. Pinheiro improves to 4-0. and oh. Pinheiro, six and two-thirds innings of work, seven hits, had that sinker going, gave up just the two earned runs. And uh, you see Franklin with his sixth save. He's six for six in save opportunities. ERA, 0.00. That's effective. And the cards now, 14 and six. Best start since 2005. Back in 05, they went on to win 100 games. So the Cardinals looking very good thus far. Jack, I want to ask you about the bullpen. Uh, Ryan Franklin, the closer for now, has been perfect. Do you see that this guy is going to be the closer for the rest of the year or too early to tell? Well, I, I think he is. He should be. You'd hope so. Um, what he's doing right now, zero ERA, um, he pretty much seems like he has command uh, out on the mound. He wants that, that job. He wants that role. And they keep, they keep using him in that role. And um, he's got such a variety of pitches that uh, I just can't see any other scenario for them if he has some problem. But Perez, McClellan, everybody did the job tonight. And so it was really kind of fun to watch because, you know, over the last uh, um, this year and last year, you know, we kind of were, were on the bullpen a little bit. And, and they've come through here. And, and I think Tony's starting to get a, a real feel and a handle for it. And with some of those young kids, I think it's a, a pretty good, Pretty good problem to have, and it's, you got some arms. Now you got to get them all in there and keep them keep them live. Franklin says he doesn't mind working with the kids. He kind of enjoys it, so he'll close for now. Hopefully, impart some information. You know, some of his experience. Well, they had a guy like that last year in Springer out. along with them, and the, those are Springer great guys. Springer didn't have, have the giant bushy beard though <laughs> that Franklin has. Offensively, uh, not a particularly huge game for the Cardinals, but a key. They came good through enough. with two outs. Yeah, well, excellent two out hitting, clutch hitting. I mean, what's better than what's better than that? You know, you get out there and you have opportunities to come through with two outs. I mean, nice bit of hitting, piece of hitting right there by by Duncan. I mean, excellent. I mean, he's showing just something that we haven't seen from him. And if he continues to that, he's going to be very dangerous as an RBI guy. Forget what the home runs come. If you drive in these big runs like that, it's a manager's dream and a pitcher's dream that's thrown the the ball the way he is. Uh, Pinheiro was throwing the ball, giving his team a chance to win, and these guys coming through from with two outs. I mean, that's uh, uh, makes you feel good and make, it puts a lot of pressure on the other team and feel like there's the Cardinals are winning games a lot of a lot of different ways right now, and everybody's contributing. And here's another here's another opportunity with two strikes. These guys coming through. And Keel comes through there. Ant Keel has a ton of ability. He can do a ton of things. One thing I think is fascinating, though, he will take an outside pitch, which you're not supposed to pull, and has the ability to get on top of it and either pull it or, or hit it up the middle. He did there for an RBI hit with two outs. Well, I think he's changing his approach a little bit, and he's becoming um, a better hitter. He's, he's, he's taken a little bit off, and actually it's adding a little bit to his swing, his, to his approach, where he's getting a little bit more plate coverage. It says just go up there free swinging. It looks like he's got a better plan, and when he goes up there, he's going to give better at bats and uh, you know he's can be very dangerous because he likes to take a rip and he likes to come through in situations so uh, good for him he's uh, got off to a frustrating start but we saw Skip last year get off to a frustrating start and come back and you know they need his bat they need his defense and uh, you know they just got a good bench they got a good starting group and and Tony's mixing and matching them and and keeping everybody ready and everybody's getting at bats and if they struggle a little bit he gets them at it and whoever he puts in there comes through and so they got to keep working keep pushing to you know get at bats and in which is good of, in terms like of the that. starting rotation Joel Pinero is more than held up his end of the bargain he says the difference is that sinker he believes and a sinker. Pinheiro, 4-0 and after getting the win tonight. We'll break down his performance next. U.S. Cellular Cardinals Live is brought to you by U.S. Cellular. Believe in something better. And by Helitech. If your basement or crawl space leaks when it rains, heal your home with Helitech. <laughs> Our Helitech King of the Hill tonight, Joel Pinheiro. Joel going six and two-thirds innings. Giving up just seven hits, two earned runs. You get one strikeout, no base on balls. But uh, was dominant, was in control. Only threw just over 70 pitches. I think it was 76. He had uh, uh, a little bit more to offer, but Tony got him out of the game. But Pinero was outstanding. When he, when he saw trouble, he got out of it. It looked like he broke a sweat tonight. He was just out there pitching, having fun. You know, looked like he was uh, enjoying himself. You know, and. and you know, pounded that bottom end of the strike zone. You can look at all these swings by the hitters. 
all these hitters are up there swinging. Now they see it, and then they don't see it. You know, the ball's just disappearing into the zone, and you see those, those they start, and then all of a sudden they have to try to make the adjustment, you know, right during the bat, and all of a sudden the ball's not there, and, and you can't stop the swing. Two things. I mean, Joel Pinero talks about his sinker, but I I in terms of where his head is at, he had injuries last season. It was a forgettable year for him. At the beginning of spring training, he was a little upset that he wasn't part of the World Baseball Classic. He said, and even Dave Duncan said, a little chip on his shoulder maybe helped him. And, of course, uh, he's in a walk year. So this is a, a, a great year for Joel Pinar to get it back together, not only for himself, but for the Cardinals, especially with the injury to Chris Carpenter. They need well, him in the rotation. Oh, well, absolutely. And, and, you know, he's eaten up some innings already. He's 4-0. and He's feeling good about himself. And, uh, you know, the Cardinals will take advantage of his personal uh, attack this year because of his future so you know he's going to go out and he needs everything and wants everything and that's the Cardinals advantage because they got a guy going out there like say has something more to play for and trying to show something one probably wants to be here and do a good job and be here for a long time and get that contract to stay here and if he keeps pitching like this he will be but he's a different pitcher now than he was last year and uh, I don't see the other teams, the scouts, going to be able to make an adjustment on him other than if he happens to get the ball up in the zone and, and gets himself in trouble. But I just don't see that happening. Well, there was no question about it. Joel Pinera was Don Brown dealing throughout the game. Brought to you by Don Brown Chevrolet. The sinker was the pitch. Incompetence in the sinker. Where is it? Down. Freeze it. See where the ball is? You're not hitting that. That's the sinker. Joel Pinero said he has to trust in his sinker. That's what Dave Duncan and he worked on together at spring training. Now he trusts in it, and you see the difference. It's down, and it's working. Well, there's not really much there to do with it. Like I say, the guys start their swing, and all of a sudden the ball disappears in the zone, so you got to try to, you know, hopefully catch it out in front before it, you know, gets to that spot where you can't do too much with it. So, you know, great job by him, and, and I'm sure he's not going to change anything. We're going to see much more of that on Joel Pinero. U.S. Cellular text time. This from Sean in St. Louis. Pinero looked impressive again tonight. Well, he has all season long to this point. How long until hitters learn to hit that sinker, Jack? When, when the sinker is working, is there a way to guard against it, to get around it, to, to fight it off. Well, you have to try to make the you try to make the pitcher get the ball up in the zone. You know, you try to work the counts. A lot of those balls will disappear out of the strike zone if you can lay off them. But uh, he's got a good one right now, and he just throws it just hard enough to tantalize you to start your swing, and you just can't stop it. And you know, with some great plays and defense tonight, Brendan Ryan was outstanding. Look, a little Ozzy Smith is out there right now, so um, good for him. And uh, you know, when the when the pitcher also can throw that sinker, trust his defense. You know, you're not going to get a lot of fly balls, and so you know. You're going to have opportunities. So as an infielder, you're ready all the time because you're anticipating it's coming to me because he's throwing the pitch up there that the guy's going to beat it in the ground and I have to be ready and um, you know get it out somewhere. That's and, and that's point. what he's doing. Trust in the sinker and trust in the defense. And certainly Joel Pinero had plenty of that behind him. As Jack referenced, Brendan Ryan, outstanding. Look at that play. We'll look at his evening and the fine defensive work he turned in next. Stick around.